everything I've done, you know, there's, there's always a little bit of something I would just like to tweak a little bit. So, so it's really, I'm still hunting down the great tune that I've never written. You know, it's somewhere out there, and that's what makes me get up in the morning. You know, I, I just know I can do better. Bro, the actual Chad Lorda. It, it, it was at the 80s in London. I was Wait, that sounds wicked! Um, to have this um, friend who was um, um, a well-known film composer in England, um, Stanley Myers, he'd written the music for The Deer Hunter and he, he was constantly working. And I got the job to be his assistant, run the espresso machine, and he would teach me about the orchestra. Friends of ours um, had started a little movie company called Working Title Film, and so we worked on a movie called My Beautiful Red, starring Daniel Day-Lewis. And so that was really my first introduction into film scoring. It sort of took off. It was it was this really unusual Wait, piece of film making, and that was a good start. Oh, banger! Rain Man came about in a very strange way. I had done, a, again, for working title film, I'd, I'd done a film called A World Apart, which is still one of my favorite movies. And Barry Levinson's wife, Diana, had seen the film and loved the soundtrack and went out, bought the CD for him and gave him the CD. I remember it was 11 o'clock at night in my little studio down a back alley in the shadier neighborhoods of London. And there was like a knock on the door. Well, I opened John the door. William, know that is There's a man standing there going, hello, my name is Barry Levinson. I'm a director. And I'm going, yeah, you and my mom both. He started to tell me about this movie that he was making with Dustin Hoffman and Tom Cruise. And he asked me very politely if I would even consider going to Hollywood and working on it, you know, while, while I was just going, yes, please. So I did it the way I did any independent little movie I had done in England before, except now we were in Hollywood. It that's, made me very, a, very nervous. Of... Literally, Barry had to, to tell me, this is okay, move on, go to the next bit, because I would have just spent forever on a single note. Great movie. Ain't no way, I didn't even know that. The Lion King. At first I didn't want to do it. You know, sometimes all the right things happen for all the wrong reasons. I didn't know how to do animation, and I, I, I thought, you know, oh, it's a Disney animated film, so it'll be like fairy tale princess. And I kept saying, I don't know how to write fairy tale princess music. And they kept saying, that's why we want you. My daughter at the time was six years old, and I'd never been able to take her to a premiere of any of my movies. And I thought, Dad wants to show off, so that's why I took the yeah, job. That, that's, and that is really chatting. There I was being flippant, you know, oh, I'm doing this movie about fuzzy animals. And suddenly I realized that the, the heart of the story is a child losing their father. And, and my father died when I was very young. Suddenly I was confronted with something. And, you know, the, 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 the fuzzy animal movie became actually very serious and very profound for me. And so, yeah, I wrote a requiem for my dad. Ah! Ridley knows that I'm useless in the mornings and I'm vulnerable because I keep musicians hours. You know, it's like, I have a nine to five job. I start at nine that's in the evening a, and finish at five in the morning. So when Ridley phoned me at nine o'clock in the morning and said, hey, do you want to do a Gladiator movie? All I could think about was men in skirts and sandals. And, and, and he, he went, no, Hans, it's not that sort of a Gladiator movie. It used to be in the screenplay, titles Gladiator pretty much straight into the battle. And I, I realized one of the things that was missing, um, and it was missing for Ridley as well, was, was a female soul. There was, you know, we talked about this idea that, that we needed a female voice in this. And th these are the great things that happen during movies. <laughs> Uh, the, the iconic, uh, iconic. Pirates. Pi Pirates was a complete accident. I mean, I was working with Gore on something, and 
I said to him, so what are you doing next? And he's going, well, I'm thinking of doing this Pirates movie. Going, Pirates movie? Really? Seriously? This is the worst idea I ever heard. I got a phone call from Gore on a Sunday going, come over, have a look at this thing. He showed me a movie that I couldn't possibly have imagined, you know, when he was talking about it. And I loved how wrong I was and how right he was. There was very little time left by the time I got onto this. I was going, okay, um, I better go home and write a theme. And I started at 7.30 in the evening. I'm, I'm just exploding with ideas, except I'm starting to be so tired. So, so, so the playing gets worse and worse and worse. And it's just like my fingers aren't moving properly anymore. Now it's five o'clock in the morning or so. It's so interesting, that's I like that. sort of how that movie came about. At the no. What seems to be a major no, preoccupation of Chris's and mine is the idea of time and how time affects everything. If you think about the three Batman movies we did, Batman Begins, yeah. Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises, it's three movies to you, but it was 12 years of our life. I think we managed oh, to figure yeah. out a new way of telling those sort of stories. I've done over 100 movies and it's always been the same. I never know if it's working. I never know how it's working. Sometimes I, I have the instinct that I might be onto something and sometimes you feel, sometimes you get that feeling of, ooh, it's all falling into place. The images and the sound are becoming one. I think sonically, you know, the, the sound of those movies became different and the sound of those movies very much, I think, influenced other movies around us. Look, look. I'll be honest though, the score of this movie was so was so well done. I, I almost felt like it, like like the movie was made off the fucking score somehow. Does that make sense? Like it seems like the, the movie was so fitting that they said, "Fuck it, yo, we got the music, boys. Let's fucking make the movie on top of it." Inception was, uh, you know, we had, Chris had written into the, his screenplay this idea of these big, uh, you know, those horns. So it was a story point, and suddenly everybody absconded with that idea and put it into every trailer that there was. Hey, yo! Wait, I wish I had more into details about it, man. There's so much cool shit. Wait. That's cool, so much cool shit to it then. There's, there's so many, so many small things to it, man. There's a bunch of things and to put it. Put it into though. every the trailer bucket. that there was. By the time we got to Interstellar, we literally sat down and went, okay, let's make a list of everything we have done and see what we are left with. You know, we've done the big brass, we've done the big drums, we've done the synthesizer stuff. Um, and Chris said, what about church organ? And at first I went, oh, it'll sound like Frankenstein horror movies. It'll be all gothic. It was actually appropriate in a funny way, because if you think about the church organ, by the 17th century, it was the most complex machine bit of technology ever built by man. And if you think that the most complex piece of technology was actually built wow. to be in the service of the creation of music, that's not so bad. I just thought, yes, okay, I'm going to give this a go, how to write something which is not gothic, but let's try to write a new vocabulary for this amazing piece of technology. That's, that's hard. And we ended up in London in this, uh, I mean, it was a truly extraordinary place called Temple Church recording this beast of an instrument with um, this I amazing watched the whole thing, Roger Sayers. About, uh, the music I had written there. all these unplayable parts and for Roger it was just like, I mean, I was really worried on our, I, so I that, remember on, on the flight over. Is that chat where, where you get the music sheets and it goes above and it, go, it, go, it goes on, uh, on top and he sits down and he starts playing it and it goes through the fucking to Chris, That's massive. What are you, were you prepared with, which is the least amount that we can actually get through before this guy is going to quit on us? You know, walking into Temple Church and there's Roger, 
this humble man, and he's going, no, why don't we just try a few things? And he just blazed through these unplayable parts. I mean, superhuman. Yeah, so they had this guy play it, right? Because he knows how to add the organ works or whatever. Blue Planet 2, little did I know, because I'm ignorant, this this Earth, this little blue planet of ours that we cohabitate, 70% of it is covered in water. And we're so used to terra firma. So I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to figure out how to have an, we call it the tidal orchestra, an orchestra that, you know, has sort of ebb and flow and waves. And, and so we just sort of, figured out how to make the orchestra into a more impressionistic tool and basically explain to the players that everything they learned about their Just instruments was the now going to go by the wayside and we were going to figure out a new way of playing the instruments. We are so dependent on the ocean, we are so dependent on this planet. Um, and we know so little about it. And I just thought if the music can become some sort of a bridge between what is under the surface to us, you know, and, and just just to bring us closer to this oh. world. So that the, the, the maybe for the mountains, just so. for a moment we realize that if we don't look after them, it won't look after us. While other kids were playing with Legos, I was torturing the piano. And you know, you know, it sort of became an obsessive thing. Okay, so I'm basically it, unemployable. I can't do anything else. I have to stick with this music thing because it's the only thing I ever learned, and it's the only thing I that gets me out of bed. And the yes, I will now get bored with the details again. Morning is the only thing I want to do. You know, I'm still learning. Here I can.